Hello beautiful souls and thanks so much for tuning in again. My name is Luca and welcome back to Source Light Star. So I am very very excited about this reading because this is going to be my very first collaboration that I'm doing. So this time I'm collaborating with the beautiful Colleen from Spiritualistic and we're both going to be doing an Akashic Records reading. So on this side we're going to be tuning into guidance and advice from our more evolved selves. And on the spiritualistic channel, there is going to be an Akashic Records reading, but we are tuning into major events or important events from our Akashic Records. So if you feel called to, and if you don't know Colleen yet, please visit her channel. She is an amazing channel and I'm very, very grateful for this collaboration and I'm super excited to see what comes up. <laughs> so today we have three piles to choose from, as you can see. And I'm asking you to use your intuition to see which pile has a message for you. And as usual, you will find the timestamps in the description box and I'm going to be seeing you in your reading. Hello, pal number one, welcome to your reading. So today we're going to be tuning into your Akashic Records and we are asking for guidance and advice from your more evolved selves. Now, before I get in, it's very important to understand that the Akashic Records they hold the energetic imprint of both our past lifetimes and also our future lifetimes. So your most evolved self could literally be from any timeline. It could be from the future, could be your future self, could also be an ancestor, could be your past lifetimes. And yeah, I'm super excited to see who comes up to give you some guidance right now. And uh, since this is uh, one of the first Akashic Records reading um, readings I'm doing on this channel, I wanted to do something a bit different. So before I even get into the cards, um, I've been tuning into a meditation. So I meditated for five minutes and I uh, d just wanted to see what comes true for this pile before looking at the cards. So straight away, um, a thing that came true very strongly was shamanic tradition. So in your case, this morsel feels like an ancestor. This feels like a past energy from past lifetimes. But then again, it's important to know that all our past lifetimes, they exist right now. So whenever we tune into past lifetimes or future lifetimes, it's really parallel lifetimes. But this especially, yes, it's an energy of a healer of a shaman and it feels like you have been this person in a past lifetime but on earth and that's why we talk about it as if as if it would be a past lifetime but really it's a parallel lifetime i feel that's important to mention and yes also atlantean energy coming true um, so it could very well be that you have had a past lifetime in atlantis but it's more so uh, the story of atlas so Atlas, that's the Greek god who is carrying the world on his shoulder. And Atlas is actually inspired or it was the Romanized or Greek version of the Egyptian god Shu. Shu is the chemetic god of breath and air, but also of space. So the first duality of creation is Shu and Tefnut. And in the, in the story of creation, Shu is upholding the heaven. So it's Shu who is separating the earth from the sky. And it's this figure with the upraised arms. So there is something with upholding, like the guidance that you're about to receive has something to do with upholding. I'm hearing upholding your values, upholding your truth, because it's really by us breathing, that's why Shu is the breath of life, and it's life in general, it's also fire. So with qualities of air and fire, you are up upholding your truth, or you are upholding something in your life. I'm very curious to see what this is about, 
but there is a big emphasis on yes the element of air and fire so breath and life force and the upholding of truth and then i got the word rooster which i immediately connected with new dawn and i heard the, the song it's a new dawn it's a new life <laughs> i don't know what's the name of it but there is definitely a feeling of rebirth and it's very interesting because that also seems to be connected to shu because shu also has the energy of zeus which is the energy of thunder so there is also the thunderbird coming true like the phoenix coming true like really with the rooster it's this new cycle that is starting and yeah literally a new age a new dawn something new is dawning a new beginning is about to emerge that's what i'm hearing and it's the the feeling that is coming true is almost the calm before the storm the calm before you unleash your thunder your power your life force energy explosion <laughs> a lot of fiery energy coming through again and then i got the uh, phrase you have done this before so i'm really being taken back to shamanic tradition where the message that is coming through is all the wisdom and all the expertise and the skills and the knowledge that you need for this next step or for this new chapter or for this dawn of a new thing like you have done this before you know all of this wisdom on a soul level and it's more so not needing to learn something new but it's rather a process of remembering so i'm really being told that you are on this yeah in this awakening process like you're remembering your your past lifetimes or you're remembering the knowledge that you already acquired in past lifetimes because it's true that all the wisdom lies within ourselves and with dog and loyalty um i'm hearing that you have been really loyal to your truth you have been loyal to yourself through this awakening process and you have really dedicated a lot of your time energy and effort in this healing process and yeah it's more so your past lifetimes or your ancestors coming true to support you and to encourage you on this healing journey and awakening journey and in this next thing that is coming up i'm super excited to see what this is about so let's get in so we are tuning into the akashic records of my pile number one and please remember this is also a general reading so you can take what resonates and leave what doesn't so let's see okay <laughs> dolphin baby this is a beautiful card <laughs> this card has been coming up in every single reading i've been doing recently <laughs> and it's quite interesting to see that there are 88 cards so there is a lot of choice <laughs> and it's funny that this keeps on coming up so right now looking at the card i'm really being taken to this part here where there is this energy of solar flares this energy of activation and that's really this fiery energy that i have been feeling and yeah shu is also connected to the sun and to to ra and and zeus it's like all these different aspects of fiery energy and yeah i'm really being told that this activation process that is, that is happening right now it's helping you embody more of your cosmic inner child and so the energy that is coming through is yes a lot of deep wisdom i'm also being taken to an atlantean high priest or like a really wise shaman but it's more so coming through as yeah not this wizard or this super powerful woman that <laughs> everyone is a bit afraid of <laughs> but it's more so a yeah it's more so an energy of embodying your wisdom but with this more childlike energy with this more playful energy so it's really your past uh, selves coming true that um while this is happening it's very important for you to take care of yourself because yes you are growing into this very wise person or you are remembering that you already have been this very wise person 
But in this process, yeah, the message coming through is to take one step at a time. And now it's more so a time to allow things to happen and more so allowing this, yeah, having a more playful aspect. Because again, the energies that are coming through are very, very intense and it feels very over overwhelming because it's a deep, 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 um, deep activation process. And yeah, this is your invitation to take things slowly right now, to uh, also connect to water, connect to a more calm energy, yeah, adaptable, take your time, be in flow. And yeah, really connecting with that timelessness. Like, um, maybe you have been wondering, oh, this process is quite long, or it's a lot of energy coming through, a lot of light codes, a lot of, yeah, I'm really being made to feel that also this energy of maybe being a bit tired of the intensity of the energies and the intensity of these light codes and activations because again it really feels like a thunder a lightning and it's electrifying and it's activating and it's it's a lot i'm being made to feel so your guides are coming true to tell you to yeah take your time and really nurture yourself um, at this time almost like a mother would nurture their child so it's about you yeah, being a mother to your inner child and allowing that inner child to be expressed. And this allows you to embody, yeah, to embody your wisdom in a more playful way. So instead of, instead of embodying the energy of the Queen of Swords, which can be very direct and very the truth that sometimes hurts, but with this energy, it's about embodying your truth, but in a more gentle way. And really this unconditional love coming through and a very, a very pure energy. So let's see. I'm feeling not to take reversals. So we have the Wheel of Fortune. We have the Lovers. We have the Knight of Coins. We have the Five of Coins. We have the Ten of Swords. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Ace of Cups. Beautiful. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see what this is about. Then we have the Ace of Pentacles. And we have the Ten of Cups. Mm -hmm. and I'm feeling drawn to pull two more Oracle cards. So what is guidance from the more evolved self of my pile number one? Ooh, love this card creation unique expression flow of creation and joyfulness I'm feeling one more card inner self okay yes okay depth of love oh that's so beautiful <laughs> okay so I have to honor the first thing that's coming true very, very strongly here, especially with the Ace of Cups, the Lovers. And with this energy, I'm being reminded of the Two of Cups in my deck that I have. There is a strong indication of a soulmate. So a very, very strong message. Yeah, um, I'm being told that if you are single, then it's almost like if you have been wishing to meet your soulmate, your divine counterpart, your better half, your wish is being fulfilled. Like I'm almost being made to feel this is something you have been asking for a very long time. Or it's not so much, obviously if you already are in a relationship then this can be something else, but a very strong thing that is coming true is that you have been wishing to feel love but in a way that you haven't experienced before. 
So if you already are in a relationship, then it's almost, yeah, it's almost this enlightenment or it's almost this complete shift of perspective that, that allows you to feel love in a completely new way that you've never done, haven't, that you haven't had before. And for those of you who are single, there is a new relationship coming in that is allowing you to experience, yeah, true love, true cosmic divine love, but while being on earth. Because I'm being told that you also have had past lifetimes on other planets, in uh, dimensions where the vibration is much higher. And with Atlantis, I'm really being taken to Sirius. Like, obviously, there is a dolphin energy coming through. So, um, also, Mintaka is coming through, all the water planets. So, there is this deep connection with water. And on a soul level, like, you... you I'm being made to feel you're from the ocean. <laughs> that's something that's coming true. And yeah, a deep connection also with Atlantis. There is something about the ocean. But I'm more so being made to feel that on a soul level, you've had many experiences and lifetimes almost being very much non-physical. So a lot of lifetimes really being part of the ocean. So I'm really being made to feel this entity that is made of liquid water, but it's this crystalline liquid water, this crystalline water that is alive. And I'm really being told that this feeling, this true feeling of love, and right now when we say love, it's even hard for us to describe from, from this human perspective because it's it has nothing to do with a romantic love and not even love between two individuals but it's this deep cosmic love, it's this remembrance of what it means, what, what true love means. And yes, for some of you, this can come in the form of a soulmate. But what this reading is actually about, it's, um, it's telling you that right now, this new chapter or this new dawn, this new life that is coming, is allowing you to feel love in a way that, that you have never felt before. And it's almost reconnecting back with that purity that you already were used to on a soul level. Because I'm being told that you're from the ocean, you come from this cosmic ocean. Um, and that's why I'm being taken to Sirius, because the realm of Sirius, all, all the way up from the sixth dimension to the seven, eight and nine, um, it's a collective consciousness, so it's a hive mind. So the beings of Sirius and a lot of these star whales and star dolphins, they are not physical. So they are, yes, they are somehow an individual consciousness, but they are still part of the whole ocean. So that's very similar to a wave, for example. So when there is a wave in the ocean, then the wave is not separate of the ocean. Yes, there can be a small wave, there can be a big wave. It, it depends on how separated it is from the ocean. But no matter how big the wave is, no matter how individuated or how individual this energy may seem, it's still part of the ocean. So I'm really being made to feel that, yes, you are taking this ocean of love and it's almost coming from the stars to the earth because you have been wishing to embody and to feel this love, but here on earth, because it's um, the lovers and the ace of cups are uh, it's centering your reading. So there is really this focus of drawing this energy of love and channeling it into the earth, filling your cup, but, be, but with divine love on a way that, yeah, I'm really being made to feel so much excitement and, yeah, I'm also being made to feel that you have been alone for quite some time or you have been feeling alone for quite some time because in your surroundings there were not many people with whom you could connect on a very deep level. Like you really felt that you tried to embody this light, you tried to embody this abundance or this, 
yeah you try you you have this energy of love in your soul and with this childlike energy coming through i'm really being made to feel that you you tried to express this energy you tried to shine this light but i'm almost being made to feel that um this energy that you are embodying um it almost has has been like it has been distorted in some way it has been turned into the lower vibration of it like um i'm really being made to feel that this energy of love that you have trying to embody in this more lower vibrational environment it has been seen for something else than it was so maybe you have been people pleasing in the earlier part of your life where it's almost that yeah your surroundings took your love for granted and not only did they take this love for granted, but they also projected a lower vibrational version of that love. So it's almost like, yeah, I'm really being made to feel and not a very pleasant energy that, let's say, this, this love has been almost shunned or almost ridiculed or a lot of projections. Like I'm being made to feel that you, that there were a lot of projections being put to you because you embodied that purity and because you embodied that high vibrational energy. But it's almost that you grew up in a environment where, yeah, your environment seemed to be lacking this vibration. And this has caused a lot of feelings of not being seen, of maybe feeling lonely, of almost having this feeling that something is missing. And that's why maybe you have been going through a long period of longing for love, longing for recognition, longing to be seen, because it's almost like nobody have, has had the capacity to see the depth of how deep you can love. Like you have this pure energy and you love so deeply, but it's almost like nobody was up until now nobody was able to see this and maybe also your relationships were very much i'm also feeling yeah the energy of codependency of yeah just not a very pleasant energy with with relationships or with not just loving relationships but also with your friends like almost your light being shunned or almost your light being swept under the carpet and uh, put a label onto it and yeah just not not a very pleasant energy so i'm very sorry um if you have been going through uh, this tricky period in your lifetime i'm really feeling this energy of now it's over like i'm i'm done with it i'm over with it <laughs> i'm really feeling that's why there is this um, fiery energy coming through like yes this part of your life was very important for you um, also to learn boundaries and also to learn to stand up for yourself and it's almost like yeah internalizing that love not looking for love elsewhere or in the outside but it's almost with the knight of coins there is this energy of sagittarius coming true like after this not so pleasant experiences maybe in your childhood maybe with uh, past relationships or maybe even in this present relationship or in the previous relationship after like something has happened that has caused you to say okay no more i'm gonna go on a quest i'm gonna find out what is causing these patterns what is causing these relationships because i'm being made to feel that you almost almost always found yourself in similar situations and these were actually mirroring maybe a childhood wound where yes and i would like to say a trigger warning here there is also the energy of ab abuse coming true so this love of you has been abused and it almost has been taken for granted and yes i'm being made to feel that many relationships you have had they were mirroring this wound and at one point you decided no more i'm ending this right now and you went on this quest to find out, yeah, what was causing these patterns. And you were looking for this gem, for this golden nugget. And what you have done is you have found yourself. You have reconnected with spirit because that nugget that you have found is the seat of the Ace of Pentacles. And that's really, yes, it's physical energy. 
but the Ace of Pentacles is the physical energy that comes from spirit. So it's almost you have been trying to connect with the spiritual cause of why things are in effect. So the effect is your life, the effect is your life experience, everything that is in creation. But through this introspection and through this period of looking inwards, you have yeah reconnected to the realms of spirit to find out the cause. And that's why also the energy that is coming through is astrology and looking maybe into your birth chart, learning more about yourself, really doing, I'm seeing the hermit in my mind's eyes. So really, yeah, this introspection, like getting to know you, getting to know you on a deeper level. And I'm really being made to feel that this love has here all has been here all the time. But it's really more so about... Um, yeah, almost removing all these projections, more so of other people, because you came into this realm, into this world as this wise, again, this queen of swords energy coming through, as this wise shaman, this healer, this very wise person, and this is Ma'at. So you came here to embody balance, to bring harmony and to bring love, and love is actually the ultimate harmony, the ultimate balance of all dualities. Love is non-duality. So you're coming in as this teacher of non-duality, this teacher of love. But then you were thrown into an environment that is so tainted by all these projections. And maybe you also grow, were growing up in maybe a very religious environment or where almost the outside world has been imposing this duality onto you. And it's almost, yeah, with the Joker, it has been ridiculously, um, how do you say it? Yeah, you have been ridiculed for your life. You have been ridiculed for your love, for your purity, for your, for your wisdom also. And it's almost, this wisdom has been shunned. There is, yeah, so much, so much um, restrictive energy that I'm, being made to feel and I'm really being told that you have been very brave in being a warrior you have been very brave in standing in your truth that despite of all this resistance despite of all these energies that were trying to lower your vibration this is literally I'm being made to feel this child that comes in with this high vibration and then all these energies that are trying to contain this light or are trying to push it down. But this is more karmic energies and it doesn't have so much to do with you personally. So you have done nothing wrong in this life and it's not that you have been punished for anything. But you came in to be this master, to be this wise woman or wise man, this wizard, this healer and... Yeah, for us to learn and to heal and to grow on a soul level, we need to go through these periods as well. And we need to go through this empowerment in order to find our power. So it's almost like on this journey of your love not being seen or your love that was taken away from you almost, you have rediscovered this love, but on a completely new way that you have never felt before. Because again, in these higher realms, you have been embodying this energy, but you were in the higher realms. But right now you're taking this energy from the higher realms and you are embodying it here amidst all of this darkness. And yeah, having mastered all of these challenges and I'm really being made to feel it's over now. And that's why the rooster has been coming through a new dawn, a new life. This cycle is over now and the tides are turning. A new life is be beginning and this, this karmic cycle is over with the 10 is you have completed this cycle. And now all the swords are dropping and you're moving forward with one sword. And that one sword is your truth, it's your love, is your connection to source, your connection to this pure love, to this depth of love. And I'm being made to feel that this is what opens up the doorway for a soulmate to come in. If you are single, I'm very, very strongly feeling that. We have the lovers, the ace of cups and depth of love, beautiful energy. 
and your wish is being granted to you like i'm really being made to feel that yeah things are starting to turn in your favor and with the ten of cups it's really yeah you have been healing a lot on a on a mental level because there is also gemini coming through so it's more so yeah mental projections that you have been very brave in working through and it's more so it has more so to do with a mindset so maybe you also have been telling yourself oh maybe i'm not worthy of love maybe i'm not worthy of being who i am like almost this feeling of needing to hide behind a mask but you have done a great job of taking out all the swords one by one one by one and really tending to your heart tending to all these wounds and you were able to tend your own wounds tend to your own wounds like you are not dependent on anyone and since you are completely independent now since you have found your strength within yourself then there is no longer codependency and you will no longer attract relationships where there is codependency you will know like your happiness and your sense of wholeness and fulfillment from now on will no longer depend on another person and that's why you have transcended this cycle because you have found love within yourself with gemini energy you have found peace within yourself lovers is not just lovers like love between two individuals but it's the inner marriage the sacred marriage the the yeah rising above all dualities and marrying heaven and earth oh my goodness and that's exactly the energy of shu like you are the middleman you are shu you are atlas in the middle between heaven and earth between dark and shadow between yeah we are both sides of the coins and source is both sides of the coins of the coin so you come from heaven you come from this love you come from this purity you come from from the light but you have been planted into the dark you have been planted into the darkness and into duality and into separation and you have done a great job of fighting your way through the darkness and re-emerging as this flower and that's why the lotus is also coming through very strongly like yeah the metaphor of the lotus it's planted in the dark it has to fight its way through the mud and it is re-emerging through the waters through the experience of love as a pure flower and that's really you on a soul level and again you are shu you are upholding heaven and earth and you are the line in between you are the bridge between heaven and earth you are ma'at you are upholding the cosmos with your actions and you have yeah all of your actions were in line with your karma like you have released all this karma and now i'm being made to feel that you have <laughs> a bank account full of karma full of good karma that the universe is now bringing in because yeah it's the 10 again so 10 you have completed the cycle the cycle is over now it's time for a new dawn it's time for a new life and yeah you have been so loyal to your path you have been so loyal to your growth such a beautiful energy like super i'm really feeling this rah, <laughs> this phoenix emerging from the ashes but it's doing it with such a gentleness not like i'm here cutting away your head or it's not an ag aggressive energy it's like i'm done i am done with being in darkness and i am emerging as this flower now emerging as this phoenix now and i won't allow anyone to take this away from me like this love that you have within yourself is so strong that it's unshakable and again i'm being told that this is opening your way for your soulmate to come in if you are single but if you already are in a relationship it's also soulmate relationships coming in and just yeah feeling love but in a way that you have never experienced before in this realm and you are literally taking the spiritual realm and birthing it into creation also with creation unique expression like allowing that flow of creation from the higher realms into this realm and you are the bridge you are shu upholding the cosmos and i'm feeling 
drawn to pull two last Oracle cards to finish this reading. I absolutely love this reading, such beautiful energies. And yeah, wow, I'm super excited for you. <laughs> Very, yeah, 10. We have so many 10s in these readings, like you really have been, like this cycle is ending now and things are shifting in your favor. Okay, Cosmic Self, yes. And, oh, yes, oh my goodness, I love it. I absolutely love it. So, Cosmic Self, you are a cosmic being. Stay confident in your truth and sovereignty. Right to choose, immunity to hooks. Yes, that's exactly the energy. And with sovereignty, this golden dragon, this golden consciousness, this cosmic consciousness, like I am really feeling that, feeling that you are finally stepping into your power. You are no longer afraid to speak your truth. You are no longer afraid to shine this light. Yes, there has been a long period where you were afraid to shine this light because it's almost like you learned that you needed to hide this light in order to feel safe. Because again, every time you tried to express this power of yours, this light of yours, um, it has been labeled with something lower vibrational or <clears throat> the high vibrational expression of what you tried to create or you tried to embody has been almost, yeah, it's so hard to find the words, but it has been thrown in the mud. That's what I want to say. But you have been fighting your way through the mud. You have done the dirty work of releasing all of these shadows and all of these projections. And now you are emerging as this dragon with unity consciousness, with golden consciousness. And I'm really seeing your aura is starting to vibrate so much higher. And there is this golden hue to your aura. Like there is, yeah, with all this, um, with all these light codes that you're being bombarded with, like, yes, sometimes it's challenging. Sometimes it even hurts, uh, like a lot of headaches and a lot of dizziness and vibrations all over the body. But yeah, it's, it's almost like a baby that is growing. Sometimes they also have hurt in their bones or sometimes, yeah, it's part of this growth process that we also feel sometimes discomfort. But right now I'm really feeling that this new phase is you are emerging from this because you're finally grounding into this new vibration. So there has been a period of first letting go of the shadows, healing and integrating the more bigger chunks. And then there's the second phase is allowing this energy to flow through, opening the heart. And so it's also a bit of discomfort that is coming through because since you have opened your heart, now you're allowing these vibrations to flow in. And that also comes with a bit of discomfort because it's almost a transitional period. Like you have, you're feeling these empowered moments, but then you're also feeling this empowered. And it's still a bit of this duality, this transitional period. But I'm being made to feel that right now you're emerging out of this and you are finally embodying this vibration. And that's divine sovereignty. You realizing all the aspects of who you are. And it's so beautiful that the dragon is coming true because that's the sacred marriage. Because the serpent is connected to the earth, to the invisible realm, to the divine feminine, to the night to shadow and to chaos and the birth which is the phoenix is the eternal rebirth of spirit it's this eternal cycle and it's the the eternal soul the undying soul the infinite soul the infinite spirit and the dragon is the marriage of the two so it's the mar marriage between the serpent and the bird between the yeah with between the serpentine dragon and the phoenix so it's really yeah heaven on earth you are bringing heaven on earth and you are grounding this love into the earth and now you can be still yeah still this energy of the queen of swords coming true but right now you're embodying this wise energy but with a golden aura with a super confident aura because dragons they can be both destructive but they are also super wise, but I'm being made to feel that you're coming in as this benevolent dragon and you are using this power not to destroy, not to be aggressive or not to 
have a lower vibrational aspect because um, yeah, the energy that is coming through is also that you have been going through lifetimes where this power of yours has been almost... People were afraid of your power and the lower aspect of your of that is that they have been thinking that this witchcraft or magic is something demonic. So that's why these labels, they also go not just in this lifetime, but this is a huge karmic cycle. That's also an important message that is coming true. Like the healing work you have been doing is, yeah, your present lifetime is nearly a reflection of your healing journey, but on a soul level. So, yeah where people were thinking that this power of yours is witchcraft or something demonic or anything, right now you finally have the chance to embody that power, to embody that sovereignty, but with that love. Because your intention is love. Your intention is to embody that purity, to embody that childlike cosmic self, like your inner cosmic self, the energy of a dolphin moving through the waters but so playful and so joyful just like a dolphin and yeah so it's no longer about needing to have your sword no longer about feeling yeah stepping out of the energy of the queen of swords and stepping into the energy of this golden dragon because i'm really being made to feel that with this energy everything falls into place and with this energy this new dawn this new life is yeah, waiting to be birthed into creation. I'm so excited for you. And again, with immunity to hooks, when you are embodying that sovereignty, when you are embodying that cosmic consciousness, like the consciousness that you are the whole cosmos, that you are Shu, that you are Ma'at, upholding the cosmos with that energy, you are immune to hooks. So even if someone tries to catch you, even if someone tries to project something onto you, it just falls off because this golden aura that is now just being birthed with all these light codes flowing in is undestructible and nothing can take you out of that purity, nothing can take you out of that radiance and this is how you create from now on and oh my goodness, I love this, so much healing on a heart level and I'm also being made to feel that so much abundance is coming in but abundance in love, abundance in finances, abundance in every aspect because you have done the work, you have completed the cycle, 10, 10, 10, it's over now and it's time for a new beginning. Yeah, two aces, wow, <laughs> it's really time for a new life and with this energy everything starts to take place and it's, yeah, the dragon, the dragon breathing these sparkles and that's, yeah, that's fire and water fire and air and this is the marriage of all the elements and this is true creation being a magician while yeah birthing all the elements into creating new structures like you are creating a you're creating new creations just by embodying this energy here on earth because yeah this has never happened before and i'm so excited for you oh my goodness thank you so much for allowing me to channel this reading for you. I really hope you resonated with the messages and um, look out for people entering your life. I'm very excited about that as well. And yeah, I'm also offering personal readings. So if you feel called to have a personal reading, you can always reach out to me and I'm sending you all my love. I'm sending you all my blessings. Thank you so, so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next reading. Hello, pal number two, so welcome to your reading. And today we're going to be looking at advice from your more evolved selves while tapping into your Akashic Records. And it's very important to know that when we are tapping into the Akashic Records, it can be both past selves or also future selves. So we can be getting advice from, from ancestors, from past lifetimes on this planet, from past lifetimes on other planets, but also from your future selves in this life or in other lifetimes. So the Akashic Records is really a compendium of every single life experience in this universe. And when we tap into the Akashic Records, then we can receive this guidance. 
And today I've done something which I've never done before because this is the first Akashic Records reading I'm doing or where I'm, when I'm consciously tapping into the Akashic Records and I thought I wanted to do a short meditation before I started. So for every pile I made a five minutes meditation while I was tapping into your collective energies like the the Akashic records of this collective and it's very important to know that this is also a uh, it's a general reading so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't but interestingly enough for your pile the energy that was, that was coming true was future energy so it's your future self coming true but it's not your future self from earth but your future self from and like when you have already ascended I'm being made to feel this could be either the life after this one where you are no longer on earth or it's like it's hard to say because all the lives are parallel lifetimes so all the past lifetimes and all the future lifetimes they are all existing in a parallel dimension but I'm more so feeling this is your future self from yeah a few lives after this one where you have already gone through all the process you have already ascended back to the higher realms and this is also where you come from because for the past energy i'm more feeling Sirius and arcturus and this specific future self that is coming through could be living in the pleiades right now or is talking to you to you through the pleiades and the pleiades is also a portal so it's not necessarily just a being that lives there, but it's also the cosmic energy that flows through the portal of the Pleiades. And what is Pleiades? Pleiades is about the Divine Feminine. It's about unconditional love. The Hathors are also coming true. There is a big emphasis on sound, also sound technology. So in this lifetime you might feel called to work with sound to work with frequencies with vibrations like sound healing is coming true maybe you're also a music artist and your future self is coming true to tell you continue with this because you've come from this lineage with Sirius and Arcturus like the Sirius and Arcturus matrix these two family of beings they were here in ancient times to build like all the ancient structures and we're talking about the Lemurian times we're talking about Atlantean times like they have been using sound technology to build these structures but they were crystalline temples and where stones were moving or they were shaped into form true vibration like on a soul level you have deep knowledge of frequency and vibration, but also geometry. That's why Arcturus is also coming true very strongly. And your future self is telling you to keep on working in this field. Because all this wisdom, let's say I'm really being made to feel like you were there in Atlantis or in Lemuria, and you have been almost with your mind moving blocks, but there were these pillars, these vibrational pillars, that have been amplifying your thought waves so you were literally building temples and houses with your thoughts and these were really the magicians and these higher vibrational beings who were living in prehistoric times in uh, in Atlantis and Lemuria specifically and again it's the energy of Sirius and Arcturus so all this technology obviously comes from other planets and yeah but the message that is coming through is you know all of this wisdom you have all of this wisdom encoded in your DNA and it's very important for you to still work in this field because I'm being told that through sound through you working with sound these remembrances are being activated and it's almost you're remembering this technology and you are implementing the wisdom that you have lear learned in past lifetimes in the work that you're doing so I'm almost being made to feel that you're some sort of part of your life path entails you inventing something and it has to do with vibrational frequency some of you also math is coming true very much sacred geometry and 
ratios, also science, like something that has to do with inventions. And you are here to channel this information, to give it to the collective, basically. And very interestingly enough, uh, also um, Altar was coming true. Altar is a star that is part of the, the big triangle. I don't know about the other stars, to be honest. But it's also a star that we don't often talk about. So you could very well have had lifetimes there as well. And as I heard Altair, I um, <laughs> I saw the Pokemon Altaria. I don't know what if it, that's the name in Italian as well, in English as well. That's I think so. I think it's the English name as well. And it's this bird that is blue and it has clouds as wings. So there is really this bird energy coming through. And I'm also hearing bird tribe. So the bird tribe in very ancient times, these were beings who were connected to the heavens. And that's why we call them bird tribes. But many cultures, especially Mesoamerican cultures and Native American cultures, but also Asian cultures, they are very much connected with the bird tribes. But there is this connection with the Pleiades. Whereas Sirius, that's more serpent energy. That's more the energy of the underworld. That's more the energy of inner earth, of Shambhala, of this deep underground wisdom. But with Pleiadian energy, it's this more, this heavenly energy, this cosmic energy, this, yeah, a deep connection also with the bird tribes. So you might very well have had lifetimes also in Native American cultures or in Asian cultures and being taken to the Bronze Age. But it's not so the Bronze Age, like we learned it in books, <laughs> but it's the actual Bronze Age where... Yeah, I'm being taken to Atlantean times where it's not Stone Age like we have learned it. It's not mainstream history, but it's the actual history. <laughs> and in these times, um, yeah, the, the, the technology was much more advanced. It was much more sophisticated. And yeah, it's about remembering this part of our history and reconnecting back with the truth of our origins. And yeah... Also with Bronze Age, another thing that is coming true is the Yugas. So the Golden Age is the age where the consciousness is at its highest, where everyone is embodying unity consciousness, everyone knows that they are a soul and everyone is channeling source directly. Then there is the Silver Age and then there comes the Iron Age or Bronze Age or Energy Age. But since this is coming true, I'm being made to feel that your contributions in this lifetime help us get out of the Dark Age and move us into the Iron Age or Bronze Age or Energy Age. Like, they have many different names, but it's the age where we are starting to work with energy again. And when people remember the wisdom of energy again. And that's why right now we're living in times where yeah, there is Wi-Fi coming through and uh, internet, people are starting to be more connected, people are starting to remember solfeggio frequencies and working with sound, and this is the age where all this wisdom, with wisdom that has to do with vibrational technology and with frequency, is coming back again, and you're contributing in this renaissance of these technologies. And there is also the word consume coming through, but before I get into that, I'm feeling called to pull the cards, but wow, already so much information just by, just before looking at the cards, but yeah, we're tuning into your Akashic Records, and we are asking for guidance from your more evolved selves. And we have Divine Blueprint, yes source self embodiment inspiration you are ready yes with you are ready is now is the time now is the time to weave this information into yeah into this earth and with divine bl blueprint again all this information is already stored within your dna you don't have to learn anything new 
you don't have to add any like yeah it's all within yourself and with you are ready is almost yeah your divine calling to step into your purpose right now you have been training for lifetimes and lifetimes but now is the time to bring this in and the way we bring this in is by creating so it's very important to take this first step and it's yeah it's okay not having things figured out yet because i'm being made to feel that source and your guides they are channeling through you and you are acting as this conduit for this information and there is also a big emphasis on your hands so it's very important for you to create that's the only thing that's asked for you asked of you and all the rest is all the information all the how how it's going to unfold and all the other things like i'm really being made to feel right now the only thing that uh, is needed from you is motion because our guides they can give us guidance they can give us information they can channel things through us but it is our responsibility to set things in motion like yes our guides can channel the information through us but it is our job to implement this to do something with this wisdom because we could receive let's say an inspiration or a channeling of the most amazing invention but if we are not acting on it then it's almost yeah then it's not being then there is not a flow and so there is a big emphasis of allowing the flow and part of allowing that flow is allowing that flow to be expressed through our hands not closing the gateway here but allowing the things to be birthed into creation so there is also a big emphasis on working with the uh, solar plexus right now working on your confidence because the solar plexus is the point where the creative energy is being birthed into this realm and it happens by us being assertive by us taking action and with this purpley colors like yes you have a channeling capacity you are very good at at getting this inspiration but right now the focus is really on starting things making things happen and yeah the the solar plexus is your umbilical cord that yeah where all the energy flows in so i'm really being made to feel your guides are giving you the energy that you need right now to make things happen to take that first step because again you are seeding this divine bl blueprint into the earth grid by embodying your light and by it's you're creating ripples basically so whenever you set a ripple in motion by your when you make an action when you create something when you post your art when you create an artwork when you write anything it's almost like you are chucking this pebble into an ocean and this is creating ripples and they're rippling rippling and then sooner or later they will be creating waves and that's all that's asked for you right now like just chucking the stone into the water and starting to create the ripples and then everything else happens on its own accord because a ripple is a very small motion but then with this butterfly effect it's like causing tornadoes and yeah i'm really being made to feel like your contribution matters a lot and much more than you sometimes give yourself credit and just by you literally singing or you channeling light language it's already creating a change in the entire grid wow so beautiful source self embodiment i love this energy inspiration yes you're ready allow the flow and allow this energy to be birthed into creation oh my goodness yes 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 i already love this nine of swords mm -hmm. the hanged man the emperor I'm hearing you write your own rules. Three of Cups. Five of Swords. Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Cups. A lot of Sevens. 
but also this mystical energy so either your life path is seven or seven the number seven is significant in some form but the first things first so the first thing that comes through is the eight of scepters and i'm really being told that things are starting to move very very quickly from now on because the universe is weaving things into creation for you it's almost the web has been created and now it's being channeled into this realm and it's one thing after the other like all these ripples being created and yeah by you taking action it is almost a call is going out by you creating whatever it is that you're creating this is drawing in your soul tribe this is drawing in people who resonate with you on a soul level because yes your soul tribe is recognizing that vibrational frequency and that's why all that's needing to be done right now is to just make things happen doesn't matter what the outcome is doesn't matter how things look like doesn't doesn't matter just chucking the pebble into the water and starting to create the ripples and then the universe takes over and then everything happens on its own accord and with the Tree of Cups, I'm really being made to feel that new friendships are coming in, new community is coming in, and a new sense of people supporting you with your creative projects. Because, yeah, friends are pouring into your cup, and then you can pour into their cup, and there is a lot that has to do with collaborations. And that's the new earth. We are not here to be alone, like we're not here to do things on our own and it's really about yeah weaving this web and creating these connections and the more connections there are the more knots there are in the web the stronger the whole web is so it's almost about creating these islands these pillars of light these communities coming together and maybe you have been going through a period in your life where you have been thinking that you have to do everything on your own and maybe you were a bit overwhelmed with what you needed to do like the energy that is coming through is almost from the very early ages from your childhood you were already super connected with spirit and you knew that you were here for a specific reason like you always knew that yeah you're here with a purpose and it's almost like before all this awakening went let's say mainstream or before you could connect with like-minded people you almost thought you had to do this on your own and you put a lot of pressure on yourself and with gemini energy there is a lot of overthinking a lot of a little bit of perfectionist energy as well where you thought like yeah almost not making things or not creating things because of the self-imposed pressure that you put on yourself of needing to be on top of things needing to be everything needed to be perfect because inherently obviously you knew you were here to make a big impact you knew you were here to comp contribute this thing because again the world needs you the world needs your energy your wisdom your unique vibration and yeah maybe the first time the first period of your life was more so almost having fear of starting things, almost having fear of making the first step. But this is also part of the healing that you have been doing. So yes, you have been shedding these layers, letting go of these fears, letting go of this overthinking. But yeah, it has to do with taking action. So it's more so, more so feeling a hesitancy to take action because of, yeah, maybe you always had the feeling that you needed to be on top of things or um, maybe you have been growing up in an environment where a lot of things were always expected from you like you needed to be perfect or you yourself thought you needed to be perfect or yeah there is more a shadow aspect of Gemini energy coming through and a lot of sorts as well so yeah mental energy but it's more so I'm hearing getting out of the head and taking action and you're writing your own rules now so yeah with the emperor energy it's about creating a new structure but something that works for you and no longer simply following certain rules of society just because they are 
but you are writing your own rules like you are your own master the master of your own reality and again aries energy coming true so there is a lot of emphasis on taking action but now you're taking the lead you're no longer operating from a place of maybe fear or a place of overthinking or a, a place of it's not that you were doing anything wrong but there was something in the way like almost the the foundations were not as aligned but it's almost by surrendering either that thought pattern or by healing or by allowing things to happen not needing to be in control also a sense of releasing control releasing fears allowing the flow that allows you to move forward but yeah with this emperor energy like let's get going let's create this like i'm really feeling this zest this this confidence and this like yeah now is the time you are ready beautiful energy i'm feeling called to pull some more oracle cards before i continue we are asking for guidance from the more evolved selves of my pile number two asking for guidance from the more evolved selves of my pile number two okay i'm seeing this one and I'm seeing this one and this one. So we have whale teaching, depth of experience and healing, teacher and mentor share wisdom. Mm -hmm. Then we have Lemurian shaman, shadow dissolving in gaze of truth, going beyond fear and initiation. And then we have the universe, beautiful, Metatron, wholeness, commune with all life, micro and macrocosm. Strong Arcturian energy coming through, like you either, yes, your guides are Arcturians at this time, because we always change guides, but your Arcturian guides, they are responsible for this specific thing, like a big part of your lifetime. Uh, of the mission in this lifetime has to do with connecting with Arcturian energy. But it's also the energy of universal love, but it's a super high vibration. So this more Pleiadian energy that has been coming through, I'm almost being made to feel that, yeah, you've already learned this. This Pleiadian energy has been present in an earlier part of your life. And the Pleiadians specifically have been helping you. Sorry, my camera cut out again. What was I saying? Uh, yeah, the Pleiadians specifically, they have been helping you in healing these shadows. They have been helping you in healing these wounds. And I'm really being taken back to the word consume. So there has been something which has been literally consuming your energy. But I'm more so being made to feel that it's a thought pattern. That it's not necessarily outside energy. But it's more so almost not allowing you to follow that purpose of yours. Because I'm also being told that maybe you have been going through a long period where you knew that your passion was spirituality or music or whatever but it's almost like you went through a long period where you didn't follow your passions or maybe you were uh, for a long time in a job that was not satisfying or in a relationship that was not satisfying or in circumstances yeah circumstances that were consuming your energy like it was really draining for you on a soul level because most of the times um we are overwhelmed or, or we are over overthinking because there is so much creative energy that is wanting to be birthed and it's almost like overthinking and overwhelm is being caused when we are not acting on that energy or when we are not acting on that creative impulse and yeah sometimes there was a tendency of maybe holding yourself back and not allowing yourself to express that truth or not allowing yourself to express this doesn't have to be with spirituality maybe it can be related to other things things that something that you were hiding and by you hiding this truth from others or from yourself or not allowing things to be birthed or not allowing the light to act or flow through you this has been very consuming and draining and i'm really being told that your pleiadian connection 
they have been helping you to heal this wound and I'm really being told that this has been uh, this is something karmic so it's something that goes on for more lifetimes and yeah initiation going beyond fear and you might have been going through an, uh, a kundalini awakening as well and this could have brought up all these things because I'm almost feeling this energy that is breaking through all these walls and finally the the um, the channel is clear finally the light can flow through without obstructions and I'm being made to feel that there were some obstructions in the in this area in the area of the solar plexus but also in the area of the throat so not speaking your truth and not really taking action or not really acting on the impulse of creation and I'm really being told yeah the Lemurian the, the Pleiadians also maybe Lemurians you might feel connected to Lemuria as well they have been helping you to open the blocks and to open the pathway and right now you are in a phase where your guides are changing because you have mastered this like you have gone through the initiation or you're just at the tail end of it but I'm almost being made to feel you're out of the cocoon already with the butterflies in this next phase your guides are changing and it's more so Arcturian energy coming through because right now you are finally stepping in your purpose or in what you were meant to do in this lifetime so maybe you are finding yourself in a situation where you're changing jobs changing relationships uh, debating where to go and maybe you're even in a place where you feel not lost but you just feel like oh my god there are so many options i don't know which one to choose i don't know if i should go with this cup or that cup or it's almost this feeling of okay I want to follow my passions, I want to stay true to myself now because I've been healing, I have been letting go of these shadows, I have been breaking through all these restrictions and walls and now everything is blank and I'm like okay but where, where do I go now, what's next? And I'm really being reminded of the first card again like you don't have to have the whole path figured out yet like uh, it, it's 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 actually not even possible for you right now to see the whole picture because yeah the end goal like i'm almost being made to feel the answer that you are seeking is outside of what you are able to perceive right now and that's why all that's required from you right now is just to take the first step just to get the ball rolling and then everything falls into place on its own accord but again the most important thing is to take one step and even if you take a cup that doesn't end up to be the thing that you wanted then it's okay then you can maybe go to look in another cup but it's about moving it's about not being stagnant but taking that first step and then the universe will show the way but i'm really being made to feel that the Ar arcturians are coming true very strongly right now and they are also guiding you to make this decision so with wholeness and commune it's about communing with spirit calling in your spirit guides like consciously trying to make this connection like maybe you have a spiritual practice maybe you meditate maybe you do channel writing maybe yeah anything that allows you to commune with spirit to connect with your guides i'm really being told that there is guidance on the next steps to take but yeah it's really about seeing the options instead of seeing the restrictions maybe you're overwhelmed by all the options maybe you really don't know what's what's next but again the focus right now is to take action and everything is falling into place and again it's very important to remember that you are here for a reason and you are this master this high vibrational soul that comes into this earth realm to birth something which is very important for the collective so it's obvious that this is gonna take place that you are reaching all your wishes because the universe has a very beautiful way that everything we wish for is actually exactly the thing that we are supposed to be doing in this lifetime so when you're follow when we are following our passions when we are following our dreams at the same time we are also fulfilling our purpose obviously we're here with a mission but we're also here to be happy so when you are happy and enjoying your life when you are 
acting on your passions, then at the same time you're also fulfilling the, your purpose. But again, your purpose also has to do with this very specific thing that you're here to birth. And again, it has to do something with, with sound or technology or science or vibration. Astrology is also coming through, sacred geometry and... Yeah, this is what gives you real fulfillment. So you no longer feel consumed by your environment, but you feel uplifted. You feel this openness and you feel this freedom. And it's really by connecting to your truth. And again, uh, with whale teaching, it's a very, it's wow, very powerful energy coming through here. Um, with the whale teaching, like the whales, they communicate with sonic waves. Like they communicate with these subtle vibrations and I've seen a documentary once and in this documentary they said that when a whale is calling out for its child in let's say the coast of Portugal then a whale that is in Brazil is able to pick up on the vibration and this is how sensitive whales are like the the vibration, the call, the communication that the whale sent out is being felt on the other side of the ocean. And this is how sensitive they are. And this is how attuned they are to their environment. But then obviously with all these ships and with all this noise and with all this pollution, this is creating disruptions in the ocean. It's creating, yeah, many whales are actually suffering because of all of this noise. And I'm really being made to feel that you're very, very sensitive also to all this noise, like also Wi-Fi and all these subtle vibrations, like all of this is noise. And this has been very consuming for you. So I'm really being made to feel that you are a highly sensitive soul because you can feel all these disruptions and you can feel all these waves that are there and almost disrupt disrupting your communication with spirit. But with Lemurian Shaman coming through, it's also this invitation to really connect with nature on a deeper level. Because this is where you feel most home. Really disconnecting from Wi-Fi, disconnecting from this flow of information. Because I'm almost, also with Gemini energy coming through, almost this feeling of being overwhelmed by the inflow of information. By all this noise, all these sounds, all these frequencies, all these vibrations. And your guides are coming true to tell you, please take some time out, go in nature, connect with your inner voice, connect with spirit. And I'm being told this is where the guidance is coming true. And with whale teaching, uh, as soon as the call goes out, as soon as you take this first step, as soon as you initiate things, then all of your tribe will be able to pick up on that calling and they will join you on your path and you won't be alone to invent this or to bring this into manifestation because it's really, yeah, those who are tuned into spirit will hear your calling, even if there is noise, but guess what? Love is so much stronger than any illusion or any information or any vibration that is lower. And it's very interesting, like, I'm really feeling called to also share this with you, like, all the information that we are watching in the TV and all the news that are floating around. This is also a wave. This is also a vibration. And all these vibrations, they are swimming in this whole ocean, in this soup. And that's why sometimes, like, this is more so coming through as an explanation why you sometimes feel a bit overwhelmed or why you sometimes feel a bit super sensitive or highly sensitive is because you can pick up on these subtle vibrations and most of the times the news that we're hearing they are not of a high vibration so I'm really feeling sometimes you're feeling the weight of the world um, because you're yeah you're able to pick up on these subtle vibrations and it's really this invitation to reconnect with nature and to take this step back and when you fill your own cup that opens the way for creative collaborations to come in and for everything that you always wanted to have in your lifetime like the universe is gently and wholeheartedly bringing you exactly where you want to be and yeah don't ask yourself how or how is this going to take place or how am I going to do it or how just take the first step and the path is being shown to you 
the universe lights just the very first step in front of our face and the whole road is still unwritten because yeah it's not that there is one road yet like you're writing the story but it's really about embodying that wisdom of yours and sending out that call and when you send out this call then the the vibration will be answering like um when you vibrate a certain frequency then the other frequency that is at the same level will be picking up and up on this uh, calling or, or on this vibration and you will be magnetized together you will be yeah almost automatically it's it's falling into place like everything is falling into place and i'm really being told that it's happening very very quickly for you so yeah i'm really seeing this again this snowball effect things are starting to pick up pace and things are starting to roll and such a beautiful energy i'm super excited i'm really feeling that yeah a very unique thing that you're birthing in this lifetime and it has to do again with sound frequency uh, vibration sensitivity and yeah your guides are changing right now so you're wanting to tune into this new frequency because they have a lot of information to give you right now and you also have a lot to create and you're very excited to create like this is uh, i'm really feeling this excitement excitement of finally wanting to start finally wanting to move forward and yeah taking away the shield and allowing the doors to open and this creative energy to flow through and i don't know why i'm feeling called to pick one last card to end this reading there is one more message wanting to come through I'm asking for guidance from the more evolved selves of my pile number two okay yes we have the pagoda so yeah you hold secrets encoded within your dna and only you are able to birth this into creation and that's why we rely on you now it's your guides coming through like they rely on you and again also knowing you are not alone because i'm being taken to this tree you might think from this perspective oh i'm not able to do much or oh i'm not able to create the impact that i would like to create but you're not just this little branch you're also this stem and you're the bigger stem and you're like there is so much help from the higher realms like everything like your your soul tree your soul tribe like there is so much support um, for you to bring these things into creation and three and seven that adds up to ten ten is like starting something new birthing something new and you hold the secret only you can do this and that's why this is really a true calling like get to work <laughs> but in a very gentle and loving way because you are ready you know exactly what you need to do because this is encoded in your dna and all that's necessary right now is to do the first step and everything is unfolding such a beautiful energy thank you so 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 much for allowing me to channel this to tune into this energy and i'm also offering personal readings so if you would like to have a personal reading you can always reach out to me on my email address and i'm wishing you all the blessings in this new chapter and blessing all of your creations sending you all my love and thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next video hello pal number three so welcome to your reading so in this reading we're going to be tuning into your akashic records and we are asking for guidance from your more evolved selves and now it's very important to understand that when we tune into the akashic records this can be both past lifetimes but also future lifetimes because the akashic records is the compendium of every single life experience in the whole universe so that's why when we tune into the akashic records we can literally connect with future selves of this lifetime or ancestors on earth or ancestors on other planets so there can really be a big variety of energies coming through right now and since this is uh, my very first akashic records reading 
I also felt called to do a meditation before I tune in. And I just tuned in for a five minute meditation to see what comes true. So before I'm going to be looking at the cards, we will see what comes true. Um, the first thing that I've heard very strongly and repeatedly was crystal. Crystal star, Christ, Christ consciousness. So your evolved self that is coming true right now is a being of Christ consciousness. So it's the version of yourself who has already ascended to this level of consciousness. And it's very interesting because I've been shown the picture. <laughs> there is a meme. I don't know who was responsible for creating it, but it's a very beautiful picture where there is a circle of ascended masters around a bonfire and Jesus is part of that circle and there is Yogananda, there is Mahavatar Babaji and it's almost the feeling that is coming true is you're part of that circle. So you could be literally an ascended master <laughs> or it's one of these ascended masters coming true right now to give you guidance. But it really has to do with ascension, with consciousness, with yeah, the next level in your ascension journey or in your healing journey. And it's very interesting because I um, have been shown a vision of Earth. Very unique. I, I never saw a vision like that. And I'm being made to feel that one part of your spiritual guidance flows through Venus and into Sirius. And this is very much connected to the lineage of uh, Jesus and Mary Magdalene. It's the serpent wisdom, the serpent mysteries, the serpent tribe, the Nagas, divine feminine wisdom. It's uh, this deep underworld wisdom, like this deep occult mystical knowledge, like you're connected there. True Venus, that's one gateway, one pathway, energetic pathway. And the other pathway, they have been showing me that it's going down, but it's, I don't know <laughs> in which direction the star is, but the other one is going to Vega. And this is very much connected with the Vedic tradition. So Vega is a star in the Lyra constellation. And a lot of the Vedic knowledge comes from that stream of energy, comes from the Vedic, like the Vedic tradition, like the Vedic teachings and the scriptures, they are connected to Sirius and Vega. And I'm being told on a soul level, you are energetically connected through these two streams. So it's almost like when you're channeling, there are two streams coming in one tribe of soul spirit guides and another tribe of soul spirit guides but they are still connected somehow so very unique uh, I've never challenged uh, ch uh, channeled a message like this um, another thing that came true is also ruins so the first time it came through I'm really being made to feel that the energy of a tower so something is ending or something is in ruins but then I was taken to Cappadocia. So if you've been to that place or if you feel called to travel there, like these are ruins of a very ancient cultures, culture that is engraved in a stone. Or it's almost, I'm also being taken to Malta. There are these underground cities, this, um, yeah, these underground passageways, these ruins. So there is something about ruins in that region so Turkey, Greece, Malta, that region that you either are connected to, you either had a past lifetime there or you are wanting to visit these places because I'm being told that there is an activation happening. Because every time we visit certain places, we are literally absorbing the ripples of that place. So everything that went on in ancient times, like we are still able to pick up on these ripples. That's why when many people travel to Egypt, for example, like they come back and they are super activated, just like myself. When I went to Egypt to visit the pyramids and all these temples, like so many things started to open up after that journey. So it's almost, yeah, if you feel called to a certain place for no reason, Cappadocia, for example, or Malta, for example, or any other place, the pyramids or Peru or whatever, any place that you feel drawn to, please visit that place because your guides are coming through to tell you that there is an activation for you. 
and it has to do with remembering your past lifetimes. And this information, in turn, is helping you to ascend in consciousness, to really be able to crystallize your being, to yeah, embody Christ consciousness in this vessel. Because I'm, yeah, I'm really being told that there is a big emphasis on past lifetimes for some reason and an activation happening by you visiting certain places. So tune into it, tune into your guidance, listen to what you have been drawn to and it's worth it. Make time for this journey because there is a lot of things wanting to come through. Almost like, yeah, reconnecting back with the soul energy pathways <laughs> very unique energy I already love it so let's see what this is about so we're tuning into the guidance from the more evolved selves of my pile number three and please remember this is a collective reading so only take what resonates and leave what doesn't and we have divine cosmic mother womb you are loved you are safe rest now sleep well so there is almost the energy of anticipation. Anticipation. I'm being made to feel that you're inside the cosmic egg right now. And you're being given healing energy right now. And it has to do with healing your relationship with the divine. Also healing your relationship with your mother. But in general, it's more so the divine feminine energy. And it's almost you're being taken back into the womb. You're being taken back into the feeling of being in your mother's womb, of being almost before creation, almost before you were birthed into creation. Because by connecting to that primal energy and being told that this helps you on a soul level to heal your relationship with the divine feminine energy. There is something in your lineage that has to do with um, the Divine Feminine, like healing the Divine, allowing the Divine Feminine to be expressed. Maybe you have been... This, the Divine Feminine aspect of yourself has been suppressed in past lifetimes. Or maybe there was more an emphasis on Divine Masculine energy. And right now it's almost like you are in this cocoon where the Mother is showing you again how it feels to be nurtured how it feels to receive healing, to receive nurturing and guidance. And yes, your loved rest now, sleep well, you're safe. So it's more so a time of turning inward, more so a time of taking care of your own needs and a very gentle energy coming through, a very soft energy coming through. And But yeah, let's see what this is about. I'm feeling called to pull the tarot cards. So we have the Two of Cups. Then we have the Hierophant. We have the Five of Scepters. The Five of Pentacles. Okay. Five, five, five. A lot of change. The Ace of Wands. Four of Cups. Judgment and the Queen of Coins. Beautiful. So the first thing that is coming true is looking at the Four of Cups and the Hierophant. I'm really being made to feel that for a long period of your life you almost felt like there was something missing or you almost felt like yeah you wanted to explore certain lineages, you wanted to maybe do a yoga teacher training, you wanted to go on a retreat or there is almost this feeling of wanting to see what else there is. Almost this feeling of not really being satisfied. But I'm being told that you found your satisfaction or you found this connection by connecting with that wisdom of the Ascended Masters. So maybe you literally are a yoga teacher or a practitioner of, of martial arts or the healing arts or you're interested in ancient civilizations or specifically in the Vedas or specifically in yeah everything that has to do with ancient knowledge 
and I'm really being made to feel that by exploring that ancient knowledge, you found fulfillment and you found, yeah, you were really seen because it's almost like you took this torch and you went down all of these rabbit holes. And by doing that, it's almost like you picked up parts of yourself. And at the beginning, I was taken to that circle. So it might very well be that you are an ascended master or your one of your guides is a very known ascended master. Like it's one of your guides. It's a ascended master that is known in this realm, in this incarnation specifically. And by maybe exploring this ancient wisdom, you have found your connection with them. I'm, I'm really being made to feel like you are going down into a rabbit hole, down into the darkness, and then you're taking the torch to find the golden nuggets, to find the bits and pieces, and almost like, yeah, redefining yourself, weaving a new web, weaving a new way of, yeah, I'm really being made to feel that you have unlocked many keys. And that's why there, at the beginning there was this big emphasis of traveling to certain places. Because when you travel to these places, then new keys are going to be unlocked. You're going to find out new aspects of yourself that you maybe haven't explored before. And that's why whenever you feel called to a place without having a reason, or whenever you feel called to do something, I don't know, taking a course or anything, listen to that calling. Because it has to do with, yeah adding more aspects of your soul, like you literally stepping into the energy of the Hierophant. For some reason, there is also religious studies coming through, so you might feel called to maybe, yeah, study with a specific group, study also, like, book circles are coming through. Anything that, like, uh, societies or anything that allows you to add wisdom, because there is this deep passion of looking into ancient wisdom. There is this deep passion of, yeah, reconnecting with what you already know on a soul level. And with the five of scepters, five, 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 yeah, there is a big change happening in your life. And it has to do with you showing up. It has to do with stepping into this Leo energy and allowing yourself to be seen because... With the Five of Scepters, I'm almost being made to feel that there were some karmic blocks which were preventing you in fully stepping into your power because there is also Saturn energy, Saturn and Leo energy coming through. So there was some restriction which didn't allow you to be that spiritual person <laughs> or to follow your passions or to go down that rabbit hole or... Almost like, yeah, I'm being shown this situation of the devil on the shoulder and an angel on the shoulder. Like, <laughs> almost one side telling you, no, it's dangerous, don't look into that, uh, you're gonna feel, I don't know, there is a lot of fear or blah blah. But then the other side is like, no, look, look inside this rabbit hole, find out more. And yeah, there is almost this duality and I'm being made to feel that you have been in this duality for quite some time. And I'm being told this was a karmic loop where yeah there was almost not a hesitancy but a little bit of fear in looking into these these things because with the two of cups it's not so much a relationship coming through but it's really this yeah allowing the depth also scorpio energy coming through very strongly like not having fear in looking into the occult because I'm being told that the occult and this very deep, deep, deep spiritual hidden knowledge, secret knowledge, um, that's very important for your path. Like something on your path in this lifetime has to do with you bringing this knowledge to a community or to the collective. Maybe you literally stand um, embodying the energy of the Hierophant because I'm being told this is what gives you a lot of fulfillment. But again, there was something karmically which has been holding you back from fully stepping into that um, into that role. And funnily enough, I'm being taken to the serpent with a lion or lion's hat. And I don't know the name of this deity, but it's the deity of time. So it's almost like now is the time 
to open the gateways. Now is the time for, yeah, karma to play out, but in, on a positive note. So I'm really feeling this feeling of being restricted for quite some time. But now divine justice is coming in and it's like, yeah, things are going to be shifting and they're shifting in your favor. And it has to do with you creating something. And I'm really feeling called before I move forward to pull some more oracle cards. Is this still recording? Yes. And we're tuning into the guidance of the more evolved cells of my pile number three. Tuning into the Akashic Records of my pile number three. Okay. It's so funny, there are so many cards, there are 88 cards in this deck, and the same cards just want to show up over and over again. So <laughs> maybe it's the same people watching my reading, so hello if you're here again. But there is purity coming out, so purity. Then we have Lemurian Guide. And we have Beyond Cycles. Yeah. Find, embrace, new direction, releasing old patterns. Beautiful. With this card specifically, that's exactly the feeling that was coming through. So it's almost not being restricted by time. Because there is something about time or something about karmic loops that has been very restricting for you on a soul level. And it's almost creating the circumstances where time does not have anything to say, <laughs> where time does not have any importance at all. So it's almost like creating your life in a way where time does not play any role. So it's really, yeah, honoring your own cycles instead of following the cycles that are imposed to you on the outside. So if you want to be awake at four in the morning to channel and to create art, then do it. If you want to sleep the whole afternoon, then do it. Like you, it's, it's about breaking out of these cycles, breaking out of the restrictions imposed by time. Very unique energy. But I'm being told that in this lifetime, what you're also contributing is creating the circumstances that allow us to yeah live outside of time to live in timelessness where time doesn't matter like the clock and the calendar and specific schedules they are so restricting and it's actually the calendar that is almost programming society because if we think about it the seven days week um it's through the calendar that it's programmed that yeah our day off is sunday or we have to work these specific hours or when there is a i don't know a, a a festival then we everyone have everyone has a day off at this like it's almost like being restricted by the calendar being restricted by the clock and the schedule and knowing that it's possible to create a different system that we don't need to follow this calendar and we don't need to be restricted by the cycles of time and this is exactly what it means to yeah to rise above all dualities not seeing things linearly but seeing things as cycle cycles and that's christ consciousness when we are no longer restricted by the duality but we rise above the duality so we are no longer restricted by past present and future but everything starts to be more fluid so there is really more flow wanting to come in where there has been some rigidity but this rigidity has been caused through these karmic cycles and i'm really being told that now is the, the now is the time to break the cycle to open the circle or to open this loop so that things can flow again and it's about yeah i'm being made to feel that you're creating a new way of living now on a soul level that has to do with yeah being more spontaneous acting more on impulse and saying like, yeah, not having a specific time frame when we are doing certain things, but really allowing that flow 
to come, allowing that spontaneity, like that more, yeah, cancer energy, like being more receptive instead of being active, but at the same time creating circumstances to be active while being receptive. <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense, but yeah, it's really about, um, I don't know if you've, uh, if you've heard about it before, but there is a sense of also the moon calendar coming true, like the ancient calendar, and uh, it's your invitation to look into that because the, all the ancient cultures, the Egyptians, the Polynesians, the Aborigines and literally everywhere all around the world, most people have been following the moon calendar and the, they have been looking at the cycles of nature instead of looking at a very artificial structured calendar that we are following right now. So the message that is coming through here is not just about learning about ancient knowledge but also implementing the ancient ways in your daily routine so not just knowing about what people did in these times but also adopting this way of living this way of doing in this present moment because when we adopt the ancient ways and when we start to implement that, then we are literally creating the blueprint for the whole of society to follow this way of living. And it is really true that if we want to have Christ consciousness, if we want to embody this enlightened, awakened consciousness all the time, which is, by the way, possible, it's not impossible like we can have such a high vibration all the time but the only thing is that the system that we are living in is not programmed for us to be in that high vibration all the time so there is really this big emphasis on changing the systems changing the structures around us so that we can accommodate this higher vibration this higher state of consciousness and we're all doing this collectively, like everyone is contributing their very own, yeah, everyone has a unique contribution in how we make this happen. But the focus here is on creating new system, systems that allow us to be a Christ consciousness being, S systems and circumstances that allow us to be open hearted all the time which is also possible. <laughs> we don't need to open our heart and then close it again and then open it again and close it again. Like there will be a time where we can be open hearted all the time because all the Christ consciousness beings are these pure beings, these beings of purity, which can be open hearted all the time without being hurt or without feeling the need of, yeah, without this purity being shunned or without this purity being thrown off without this purity being taken away so yeah a big heart opening energy is coming through like big energy of yeah remembering your purity and remembering that it's possible to live like the ancient times because again on a soul level you remember the ways like you remember maybe temple culture you remember these times where people were so much more attuned to spirit and where we were not where we were not following this artificial calendar and it's really about yeah not just remembering that you have been there but also taking that way of living and adopting it into this present moment and i'm feeling called to pull some more cards We're asking for guidance. Oops, okay. This is too much. No, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use the other ones. I'm gonna use the Arco cards. Yeah, new direction, releasing old patterns. You're literally creating new patterns. That's why we have 555. Change, but you implementing that change. Okay. Breathing. Ooh, love this. So we have breathing, ground, feel sensations, purity, clarity, expression. Again, purity. Wait, how do we do this? And ships of light. 
beam up your vibration open to star family yes i'm really being told that by you embodying this christ consciousness by you creating the circumstances that allow yourself to be open-hearted all the time by creating systems that are not restricted by artificial time constructs by you creating these new patterns these new circumstances it's almost we're opening the way for more beings to literally come back <laughs> so maybe the extraterrestrials will be landing <laughs> um, as soon as everyone will be doing this or but it's more so <laughs> it's more some a bit joking but who knows who knows maybe they will be really landing and maybe ships of light will be really showing up at some point but it's more so yeah allowing this high vibrational energy to come through and whenever we are embodying that energy, whenever we are this pillar of Christ consciousness in our own little bubble, then we are literally piercing this energy into the ethers and that is creating a pathway, a channel for this energy to flow through. So even if, let's say, many people who are not connected with spirituality at all, and even if there are because let's be honest, there are a lot of energies to transmute and a lot of karma to transmute. And we might think it takes a lot of time to be able to live in an utopia or live in this ideal world. But I'm really being told that even if we do this work as individuals, like the impact that this has on a collective, we, we, we cannot even imagine the impact that one awakened person channeling this christ consciousness challenging challenge chan channeling this enlightened consciousness into the earth how much effect this has on the collective consciousness and with chips of light it's really yeah we are all of us all light workers all channels all people who are committed to their spirituality everyone who is opening their heart there is so much green coming through Everyone who is opening their heart is opening the heart for everyone. And even if there are people who feel very dissatisfied or maybe people who will never ever look into spirituality, even for these people, there will be heart openings coming true by the contribution of the light warriors, by the contribution of everyone who is opening these gateways and allowing this energy to flow through. So I'm really being made... Yeah, the more so the energy that is coming through is your contribution matters. Even if it's small, like even if you yourself live in this new system where time doesn't exist, you're opening the way for the whole collective to live exactly that way of living. And yeah, this new system or this new way of doing things is allowing us to breathe. But with breathing, it's also more life force energy coming through. So everywhere where life force energy has been stagnant or everywhere every every aspect of your life where energy has been misdirected or it's almost like yeah with this with this energy specifically the message that is coming through is for many cycles many lifetimes the energy the creative energy of human beings has been misdirected in creating this structure, this artificial construct that is to the detriment of our own well-being, that is not allowing life force energy to flow properly, like in a way that is beneficial for us. Like it's almost the energy of wanting to build a garden, but then there are forces who are using this energy for their own benefit. And this is also, you know, I'm being taken to the bull of Wall Street so a misdirection of energy and part of your soul mission is to redirect this energy like to open the pathways and to yeah build new structures but it's almost busting the system <laughs> i'm being made to feel you are a, i'm being made to feel you are a system buster but it's not by yeah the change happens from within it's like you're not actively trying to change something in the system, but you are this pillar of light in your own little environment, in your own little world, where you are creating a completely new system that works for yourself. 
and this in itself opens the gateway for this higher vibration and this consciousness light codes to flow through so that it can be implemented for yes for all of humanity so that we can all rebuild this garden oh i think my microphone cut off but anyway i feel you can still hear what i'm saying <laughs> But yeah, such a beautiful energy and I'm really being made to feel that, yeah, you are a system buster and part of your mission is to create these new circumstances that again allow you to embody this purity, allow you to, yeah, look at life through both eyes, not just to see the spiritual side or the physical side, but to have an integrated vision of both and to break out of this system or this conditioning or this patterning that has almost forced us to look at things only through the lens of the logic mind or physical lens, like you're bringing in this holistic perspective. So it really has to do with holistic systems and with the Lemurian guides coming through is also bringing in that energy of Lemuria because all of this has been here already, like people were able to embody this purity, this high vibrational energy, like to literally feel as if we would be inside the womb of the mother. This has been, and it has the same color. So um, this is the energy that you're bringing in. This is the energy that you're embodying. And yeah, by you reconnecting with the mother, with the spirit mother, with that unconditionally loving energy, like you are literally opening the gates for everyone to allow this energy, like to be receptive for this energy and yeah, almost allowing flow to come back, opening all the restrictions, opening all these cycles and allowing things to flow more naturally. And that's why maybe you feel called right now to explore the, the moon calendar because I personally believe if we implement this calendar that is attuned to the natural cycles, then we will be able to attune to the natural cycles of the, the universe, like to the spiral of life. And if we are able to attune the spiral of life with the cycles in our day-to-day -day dealings, that is what is bringing in ultimate flow. And that's exactly what is allowing this, yeah, maybe even our star ancestors to finally land <laughs> because the vibration needs to be higher for this to happen. And yeah, even our small contribution does a lot on a collective level. And yeah, it's really about attuning to the spirals and seeing ourselves as part of this endless spiral. And that's why going beyond linear time that's why going beyond these restrictions and seeing ourselves as this ultimate spiral, ever flowing spiral, infinite creation, infinite evolution, infinite expansion. And it's bringing in this Jupiter energy, this expansive energy where, that allows us to feel love in a more expanded way. And this happens again by letting go of all these restrictions, going beyond cycles, releasing old patterns, a new direction, new systems, and you're contributing in building these new systems because you remember the ancient times, you remember your lifetimes where you have been embodying that already, and you're here to bring this in our garden, in this present lifetime. So beautiful, I absolutely love this energy. So good luck with creating new systems. Let's collaborate. I'm here for you as well. <laughs> and I'm also offering personal readings. So if you feel called to book a personal reading, you can always reach out to me. And I'm wishing you all my blessings and my love for this new chapter, for this uh, beautiful creation for all your life. And I hope to see you in the next reading. Thanks so much for watching.